Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca, otherwise known as Hip Knit Hooray Online, and today I'm going to be sharing my winter knitting plans with Stash Yarn. So seasonal planning with Stash Yarn has been something that I've been doing for the past year now. Um, I did a fall knitting plans with Stash Yarn video a few months ago, but I've been also doing this on my Instagram since the beginning of the year, just looking at yarn that I already have in Stash and just being uh, re-inspired by it and trying to imagine the perfect project that I can make with it. So this season or this video is going to be my winter knitting plans, which I'm very excited for. I feel like as knitters, winter is a time where we really um, like come out of our shell or come alive with all the inspiration because you can knit um, so many cozy sweaters, uh, accessories like hats, scarves, socks, mittens, just anything that's going to keep you uh, warm and, and cozy throughout the winter. So maybe I'll just give a bit of context into like my winter season where I live as a bit more um, background to the types of projects I'm picking this year. So I live in Toronto, Canada, and uh, as you can imagine being in Canada, it gets pretty cold here. I feel like the weather and temperature is all quite relative. I know some people might listen to this now and think that's not cold at all or that's so cold. So it's really just <laughs> relative to the, your environment and how comfortable you feel. Uh, but for me, I think Toronto can get pretty cold. So in its peak, I would say Toronto winter can get as cold as um, like negative 20 degrees Celsius, sometimes even negative 30 degrees Celsius with the wind chill. So very cold and that's why layering is really important. And so with such a cold climate, I really want to focus this season less about knitting sweaters and more about some layering statement pieces. I really like wearing um, turtlenecks as like a base layer or some sort of long sleeve jersey and then layering on top either some of my knitted sweaters, cardigans, but I really want to make more, I guess, statement or kind of unique pieces rather than just stockinette, endless stockinette sweaters. I do really love <laughs> my stockinette. Uh, really basic classic sweaters, but this season I really want to focus on something a little bit more bold. Um, so yeah, I've divided my uh, plans into three different categories. I have light layers, long layers, and cozy layers. Um, I don't know what it is. I think I just really enjoy whenever I have a list of things just categorizing them. So I've broken them out into those three themes and I'm really excited to share them with you today. So the first theme is light layers and the first pattern is the Lonely Leftovers Vest by Wool & Beyond. This is a vest that's knit in all over garter stitch and it features a I-cord tie front and then also some rounded shaping at the bottom. I think this pattern has a really interesting construction. There's a back panel um, that's knit horizontally in garter stitch and then you work the rest of the back piece and then you pick up stitches as well along that horizontal piece to knit the two fronts and then you join the work and then are knitting it um, just flat until you reach the bottom and you're doing that shaping. The pattern also has um, some I-cord edges and piping along the, the back and the sides, which I think really help with the structure of garter stitch. Garter stitch can tend to stretch quite a bit, so I think that piping or edging will really just keep the vest in, in shape and not stretch too much. It's knit with Aran weight wool on 6 millimeter needles with a gauge of 14 stitches by 28 rows. Uh, the size range for this pattern is extra small to four extra large with a finished chest circumference of 87 centimeters to 146 centimeters. And I think this is a really good uh, project for leftovers. The sample that's featured on Ravelry shows it's a nice fade from cream to, to purple using leftover yarn, um, but I'm going to be using one color. So the recommended yarn in the pattern is Drops Alaska or Drops Nepal, which is 75 meters for every 50 grams. So uh, a nice chunky Aran weight wool. But what I'm thinking of using is Drops Air. So this is yarn that I've had in stash for probably around two years now. Um, this is Drops Air in the shade Wheat. So I've had this yarn in my stash for probably around two years now and I've just been not struggling but it's I've been a bit more selective of the type of project that I'm going to make uh, with this yarn. I don't really love the look of blown yarn in stockinette stitch or textured stitches. I just think it's because it doesn't have a lot of drape to it because it's so lightweight. I just find that sometimes I knit the cardigan number seven and I just find that it doesn't sit the best way that I want 
uh, when I'm wearing it, but I do really like the look of blown yarn in garter stitch. So I'm really excited for, for it to be in this project and I have enough to hold it double because I purchased that sweater's quantity. So holding it double, I'll have enough for this vest. And I'm thinking for the piping, I'm going to either do this light blue. I guess I was kind of inspired by the photos uh, that are on the, the product page. So this light blue, or what I'm thinking just because it's um, going to be more neutral and I can layer it with other, I guess, brighter color things underneath without the blue, it's just, it'll go with a little bit more, is I'm going to use uh, this combination. So this is Melange Mohair, and I don't know what the brand is actually. I picked it up from uh, this shop called Omomo. It's like a Japanese home living store in uh, where I am. I don't know if they have other locations outside of Canada, um, but they have a yarn section. <laughs> and so I got this yarn here. It's called Melange Mohair, but it's actually not mohair. It's, uh, I think it's fully acrylic yarn. I used this yarn for the Soon sweater that I made a few years ago and I held it with a mohair. And the reason why is because, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but the yarn has like a slight wave to it. And when I was knitting um, stockinette stitch, it was the stitches were a little bit uneven because of that. But when you hold it with a mohair, for some reason it just really evens out. So I'm my, going to be holding it with Drops Kid Silk in the shade Off-White if I need that, but because the piping is so thin, I, I don't know if you'll be able to see the uneven um, stitch texture. So I may not have to hold the mohair, but I have enough for that. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'm probably gonna do this combination here. The next project is also by Will & Beyond. It's the My Honey Vest. And this one is also a vest with um, an I-cord tie at the front. And it looks a little bit more advanced with the brioche. So I think it'll be a good project to knit after I've first kind of understood the construction of these vests by Wool & Beyond. So I'm going to be knitting it after the Lonely Leftovers vest. This is a cropped vest that's worked in two color um, honeycomb brioche stitch. And there's also some double knitting. Actually, I think the ties might be double knitting instead of I-cords. So sorry, I might've said that at the beginning. Uh, and it's knit in a similar way to the other um, vest where you knit that horizontal back panel. And this vest has two ties at the front, which I think are such a unique statement. Uh, it's knit with sport and fingering weight wool on 3.25 millimeter needles. Uh, and the size range for this pattern is extra small to 5XL. And the finished bust circumference is 90 to 150 centimeters. Uh, so I've collected some special skeins or I've had these skeins in my collection for a bit of time and I just want to combine them together because all of them have some some meaning to me so I think if I put them all together in one project it'll just be an extra extra special project uh, so this is my plan so um, the recommended yarn in the pattern is platelope which is an unspun icelandic yarn and the meterage is 300 meters for every 100 grams and then also two different types of fingering weight yarn one of them is a sock yarn and the other one is a fingering weight merino yarn so this is the yarn that i want to use i'm going for a pink and brown combination but we'll see if this works because i want to use uh letlope for the um, main color that's along the honeycomb brioche. The reason why I'm not really sure this is gonna work and I haven't done a gauge swatch yet is because this yarn is say like more of a worsted weight. So it would be 200 meters for every 100 grams rather than the 300 meters for every 100 grams like what is suggested in the pattern. So we'll see if that works. I might have to make some modifications like changing the needle size maybe changing the sizing, but I really like this yarn for the um, for the vest because it's more of a rustic wool. So I like the fact that it's going to be layered on top of something else being a vest. Um, and I just, I think it looks really good with the other two yarns. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be the main color in the brioche. And then the background color is going to be this yarn, which is the Sizzergit, Hope I'm saying that right. I know I, this was in my first knitting podcast and I also said I wasn't sure if I was saying it right and I didn't search up how to pronounce it. So I hope that that was correct. Their sock yarn in the shade Mary Poppins. So that'll be the background. And then for the 
horizontal back panel and then the um, edging and then also the double knit straps, I want to use this yarn here, which is an alpaca yarn. So I got this yarn at the CNE, which is a festival. It's not a yarn festival. It's almost like a fairgrounds or carnival type festival. It's for like family and it's a really famous um, uh, event that they have in Toronto each year, but they have a farm, a little farm section uh, and they had um, some yarn that was there, which it was the only yarn I saw at the CNE, but I, I was like, this is so cool. I haven't really seen a lot of local alpaca yarn before at some of my yarn shop, my local yarn shops. And so I thought, I'll, I'll just pick it up. So this is 85% uh, alpaca and 15% bamboo, and it's 350 yards for every 114 grams. Um, and I just, I think the color is gonna work really well for this. And I think the alpaca is gonna um, add some nice drape to the uh, double knit ties. So the next pattern is the Aura Top by Rose Knitwear. This is a long sleeve top that's worked at a very open and airy gauge with one strand of mohair and it's knit from the bottom up. So this is actually going to be one of the first times I've been working a long sleeved sweater or top uh, from the bottom up. So you first cast on stitches and you work the, the body in the round and then you separate for the front and the back and then you seam that at the top and then you're working the sleeves flat. Uh, and then you seam it close up the arm and then attach it to the body at the end. And like I said, you knit it with one strand of lace weight mohair on six millimeter needles. So it's a very open gauge. It's 14 stitches and 19 rows for every 10 centimeters. And the size range is extra small to 4XL to fit a chest size of 71 centimeters to 147 centimeters. And you need three to five balls of mohair and the pattern recommends knitting for all of soft silk mohair. So the yarn I want to use for this pattern is this right here. <laughs> it's Knit Picks Aloft, uh, which is a super soft mohair. That's why I specific specifically <laughs> picked it for this pattern because it's super soft. I can wear it uh, next to skin compared to some other mohairs that I've used that can be a little bit scratchier, like maybe a tad bit more irritating. This is the softest mohair that I've used um, in the past. The only one that might compare to it is the Isagar mohair, soft silk mohair. So this is in the shade Koi and I wanted to make a really bright uh, statement piece with this. Uh, I have this top here. I brought it to show you. This is a sheer top that I wear a lot as like kind of like a going out piece. Um, and it's it's black. It's a really nice neutral, but I think this could be really cool as like a very bright pop of color, especially in the winter time. It's I think going to be a really cool, um, yeah, just like a statement, something that's really bright and it'll be really fun to work up as well. The next theme is my long layers. So the I'm thinking of knitting the Leon sweater by Petite Knit, but extending the length into a sweater dress. So I'm wearing right now the Minto sweater, which I extended into a dress by just knitting the body uh, around 20 or 30 centimeters longer. So I didn't make a ton of modifications. I'm just extending the length of a, of a sweater pattern that's already out there. So the Leon sweater by Petite Knit is work from the top down and there's a back shoulder seam that's worked with increases and it features more fitted sleeves. And it's similar to the Poppy T or Ava Cardigan construction that Petite Knit has released as well this year. Um, and the reason why I think this pattern works really well for a dress is because it has um, some positive ease around the body. I think it's intended to have 25 centimeters of positive ease, which I think has will create some really nice drape. And also the sleeves are a little bit more fitted. I find that, um, so this is the Minto sweater that I extended into the dress length and it has some wider sleeves, which I think are really cozy, but it's very hard to fit uh, this sweater into the sleeves of my jacket. And so I want to make some things this year that have a little bit more of a fitted sleeve. Uh, and then also the pattern has that back seam that ends right at the shoulder and then slopes down quite dramatically. So it's, it's more fitted to the shoulders and I think that will help a lot with the drape of the garment as well. So I've knit this construction in the past. I've made sweater number 18 by My Favorite Things Knitwear that has a similar back seam worked with increases. 
um, but it's much wider. It goes past the shoulder, so it, it creates more of a drop shoulder fit. And I found that I, I actually frogged that project. I don't wear it. I I just found it was quite uncomfortable the way that it, it had like a very tight seam, but it was very oversized. And I just felt that it, it didn't fit very well on me and it was just a little bit uncomfortable. So I think that this one is looks a little bit more promising. I think I'm gonna like the, the silhouette. So the recommended yarn for this pattern is two strands of Sandis Garn Sunday. But what I'm thinking of using is originally lovely Crea yarn. Actually, I should show you the, the color. <laughs> uh, and it's in the shade Chestnut. And I just want to be transparent and say that this yarn was gifted to me by Originally Lovely. I wanted to initially use this yarn for a Moby sweater. I mentioned it in my last podcast, um, but I knit a gauge swatch. I don't have it anymore. I frogged it uh, and it just didn't have the best stitch definition, which is what I'm learning uh, can happen with alpaca yarn. I guess because it has like some shine and quite a bit of drape to it, it just doesn't show off textured stitches they just don't pop as much so the cables and the garter stitch looked good but uh the double moss stitch it, it kind of got lost in the yarn so i i realized that that probably isn't the best um project for it but because there's a light a nice drape to alpaca yarn i think it would be really good in a dress so uh i'm excited for this color i think it's going to be a really nice more of a basic piece. I don't have a lot of like warm tone browns like this and um, in my wardrobe, so I think it will be a nice addition. And the second long layering pattern is the Komurebi dress, hopefully I'm saying that right, by November Knits. This is a v-neck sleeveless dress. It's knit top down and it's calf length and it features a split hem. Uh, and then there's some ribbing along the armholes as well. It's sleeveless, as I mentioned. So it's knit with light fingering weight and lace weight yarn held together on four millimeter needles. And the size range is extra small to 3XL with a finished chest circumference of 92 to 137 centimeters. This pattern has many different yarn recommendations in it. The model photo uses knitting for olive, merino, and soft silk mohair together. Uh, but the two yarns that I'm thinking of using for this is uh, more of a light DK weight and light fingering weight yarn held together. It, they are both from Isagur. This is Jensen on the left and Tabini on the right in the shade 100. And it, they're both 100% pure new wool. So I think it's the same base fiber, but just uh, created at more of a DK weight and then a light fingering weight. They feel the exact same. It's more of a rustic weight wool. Um, and I got this uh, yarn sent to me for test knit. So it is, uh, it was technically gifted to me, but it was for another project. It was for the Aspen sweater, but they sent a lot of leftover yarn. So I, I have a lot to make a, a another project. So that's why I'm thinking of making this dress. Uh, and this yarn is quite rustic, I would say, or at least more rustic than what I'm used to, to working with. Um, so I think this would work really well in this type of dress because it's meant to be layered, uh, in the project photos, um, the designer has layered it over a button up white blouse. And so I think it'll work really well because it won't be worn next to skin. I also like the split hem in the dress as well. I think it's a nice design detail and it's a little bit more balanced because it's a longer silhouette. I don't wear a ton of dresses that are calf length just because I, I'm more on the shorter side and so I find that sometimes a lot of store-bought calf length dresses end up being like a more awkward length on, on me. So I like that with knitting, I'll be able to customize it to be the perfect length for me. And I think the split hem is gonna really balance it out nicely. I am a little bit worried with this pattern um, about the v-neck. It looks like it sits, I'm just looking at the product photo here, it looks like it sits quite wide and I don't know, like it's, I worry that it's just gonna slip off the, the shoulder. It looks really loose and I think the photos are, they look really nice, but they're very styled, right? So I, I feel like it may be in practicality, it might be a bit wide um, and not fit the best. So I'm gonna look a little bit more at some finished object photos or maybe if there's any videos online of it, like in motion and brainstorm maybe some potential modifications I could make to it. 
And the next theme is cozy layers. So let's start off with the sweater number 20 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This is a top-down drop shoulder sweater worked in uh, many different types of cables all over. And it features a chunky um, v-neck and also long two by two rib hems along the sleeves and the body. So you may remember that this was featured in my fall knitting plans with stash yarn video. Uh, I didn't get to make it. I, my plan was to finish it by Christmas. I haven't cast it on yet, so that is not happening, but I'm going to be knitting this sweater with um, an accountability partner. <laughs> I'm going to be knitting this with Paige of the knitting page. She's also going to be casting on a sweater number 20 in the same color as well. So more about the pattern, this sweater is knit with Aran weight and light fingering weight wool held together on 5.5 millimeter needles. And there's three sizes for this pattern, extra small to double XL, uh, with a finished chest circumference for the three sizes that measure between 116 to 136 centimeters. Uh, the suggested yarn in the pattern is Filcolana Peruvian Highland Wool and Filcolana Alva uh, held together. But what I'm going to be using is what I already mentioned on my fall knitting plans video. So it might be like a little bit repetitive, but I'm going to mention it anyways because I kind of really struggled with that. Like I, I realized that my knitting is not as fast as the plans or my imagination, I guess. Uh, I had my fall knitting plans and I featured six patterns. I didn't actually have a finished object that came out of those plans. I have two that are current whips, but no finished objects. And to me, I felt a little bit, I don't know, like embarrassed, I guess, or I don't know if embarrassed is the right word, but I was just sharing all of these plans and, and ideas and then nothing really ever came out of that. And it's not that I didn't want to knit them. It's just other things I guess kind of came up. I had different test knits and then since I guess early October I started making and started getting really excited about knitting all the ornaments and so I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't feel that embarrassment or shame when I don't finish something because it's just like an arbitrary timeline or deadline that I placed on myself to knit all of those things in one season. So I'm not trying to put too much pressure on myself and it's okay if I have, at least to me, it's okay that I have some, some repeats um, and just maybe talk about the pattern again and get excited about it again. So that was in my fall knitting plans video and I used the same yarn combination that I'm thinking of doing right now, which just shows me that I think this is going to be the perfect pattern for it because I still want to make it with this exact yarn. So this is um, Loops and Threads Cozy Wool Merino in the shade red, which is a super wash merino and acrylic blend. I've spoken about this yarn combination before. I've knit quite a few sweaters with it held with a mohair and I really like the way it works up. It's quite an affordable alternative to, um, I guess, 100% wool. So it's $12 for uh, 375 meters of yarn, um, of DK weight yarn. And so it's, a, it's really affordable and it's a really great alternative. I really like working with it. Because it is super washed though, it grows quite a bit. So you just have to factor that in when you're picking out your projects. So I'm gonna be using that with uh, Drops Kit Silk, also in the shade red. And this yarn I purchased from Wool Warehouse last year. So um, the pattern uses a worsted weight and fingering weight, and this is a DK with lace weight. So I'm going to have to do some calculations and maybe some modifications to the pattern to um, achieve gauge and make the pattern work. But I just really like the all over cables and because it's a more oversized fit, I also like um, the, the V-neck. I think it's a really nice statement. And again, it's going to work really nice for, for layering. So I didn't finish it for Christmas, but now that it's in my winter knitting plans, I want to finish this by um, Chinese New Year, which is February 10th next year, or Valentine's Day, which is February 14th. So either way, I want to finish it by mid-February, and I really intend to, to cast this on soon. And the last pattern that I want to make with stash yarn this season is the Sophie Shawl by Petite Knit. 
so this is an obtuse. I, I searched up, I was trying to figure out what triangle shape it is. It's an obtuse triangular shawl with I-cord edging. So you start at one end of the shawl and you work uh, increases until you reach the midway point and then you work uh, decreases to the other end of the tip and it's knit with garter stitch. The shawl is knit with worsted weight wool on five millimeter needles uh, and a pretty, I guess, airy gauge at 17 stitches and 30 rows for every 10 centimeters. And there's three different sizes in the pattern. There's a small, medium, and large, but this is a very popular pattern. I'm sure you've seen many different uh, renditions of it, um, but you can easily modify this or customize it to the amount of yarn that you have um, on hand. So I knit a Sophie shawl last year and I knit, I would say like between a medium and large size. What I did is I just, I weighed the yarn before I started. And then once I reached half of half the amount of yarn that I had left, I think the skein was like 300 grams. And then when I reached 150 grams and I started working the even decreases. Um, so you get, you can easily customize this to whatever amount of yarn you have. Uh, so the suggested yarn is, Gepard Eco Cashmere Vintage or Seniskarn Alpaca Wool. Um, but I'm gonna be using Originally Lovely Fluff. And again, this yarn was gifted to me by Originally Lovely. This yarn is an Aran Weight um, blown chainette construction yarn. And I've chosen the shade Lapis, which is a nice uh, jewel toned, I wouldn't say like it's an electric blue, but it's a nice, deep saturated jewel toned blue. Uh, I mentioned this and I already kind of described the yarn in my last uh, knitting podcast, but I figured I compared it to the Drops Air and since I have it here, I thought maybe I could do like a brief comparison. So both yarns I believe are co constructed in the same way. They both have that polyamide tube or cording and then they insert or blow in the alpaca fibers. But what is different about them is the gauge or the meterage. So Drops Air is 150 meters for every 50 grams and Originally Lovely is 130 meters for every 50 grams. So maybe I can hold up some yarn here to show you like a thickness comparison because there is like a visible difference. So I think you'll, you'll be able to tell the Originally Lovely, which is the blue, is a little bit thicker. Um, and so, yeah, they're very similar. I would say originally Lovely yarn doesn't have as big of a color range. Drops has a much bigger color range. But if you're looking for um, a chainette style blown construction yarn, but you wanna work it at a thicker gauge, then I think the originally Lovely fluff would work great. So because uh, the Sophie shawl uses a worsted weight yarn, this is gonna work perfectly for it. And because it's this nice um, bright blue, I think it's gonna work really well in my wardrobe. I have a black parka, uh, and so this blue is just gonna really brighten it up and add that nice pop of color. And the loftiness of the, the yarn, it's really lightweight, but I've knit the um, penny gloves before with an alpaca, uh, blown alpaca yarn, and it, it just adds a lot of warmth uh, without being too too heavy. So those were my winter knitting plans. I'm really excited for these statement pieces rather than just always knitting sweaters. So really looking forward to just a, a change in, in knitting process. Um, and let me know down below if there's any other vest patterns that have been inspiring you. I've been really into them lately this season. So uh, if, if there's any that you think that I would really enjoy that you really like knitting, I'd love to hear it down below. I really like creating these project planning videos. This might be the last one that I do with Stash Yarn for quite a while, just as I'm trying to play catch up and, and trying to, to knit some of these patterns. Uh, but yeah, I've been having a, a lot of fun with this and I hope you enjoyed the video. And with that, I'll see you in my next one.